pairs. In order to represent a rational number, we need to represent the pair of a numerator and a denominator. So we need some way of binding these two things together into one object. And we can do that using a built-in data type in Python called the tuple. So the way you create a tuple is to put parentheses around some values with comma separating them. This is not a call expression because there's no operator here. Instead, it's a tuple expression. And the result is a compound data type which is bound to the name pair. So when I then evaluate pair, I'll get back exactly those values. Now this is actually one compound value that has two parts, one and two. In order to split apart those parts, we can use multiple assignment, where on the right hand side we write an expression that evaluates to a tuple, and on the left hand side we give names to each part of the tuple. X and Y are now bound to one and two. The other way that we can select the parts of a tuple are using subscript notation or element selection. So these brackets take in an index of which element of the pair we want, starting with zero for the first element and one for the second. So pair zero is one and pair one is two. So we're just accessing these elements of the pair. The element selection notation using brackets can also be achieved using a function, because we can do anything with functions, right? So the function get item in the operator module has exactly the same effect as using those square brackets. I can call get item on the pair with index zero, and it will give me back one, or I can get it with index one, and that will give me back the second element, two. So what do we have here? We have a tuple literal, uh, which is a comma separated expression. Usually you put parentheses around it, Actually, those parentheses aren't required in some situations, but I always put them in. What we see here is with multiple assignment, we unpack the tuple. We can also access each element in turn via element selection, which can be expressed with square brackets or with the function getItem. Now, tuples can actually hold more than two elements. We'll get into that next lecture. So now we can represent rational numbers, and we'll do it with this built-in tuple type. So a rational number is constructed by the rational function, which takes in a numerator and a denominator. And now we have an easy way of implementing that just by returning a tuple with n and d as its two elements. So we construct a tuple. Now, of course, when we call numer, we need to get the first item of that tuple back. So we can use the getItem function here we could also use the square bracket notation. Either way is fine. And the denominator is the second element. So we select from the tuple, which um, now that was a really simple example of a constructor and selectors, but they don't always just have to create a tuple and then access items of that tuple. Instead, we could have a constructor that does a little bit more work. So for example, if I multiply together three halves and five thirds, the answer I'd like to get is five halves. But according to the formula I had before, it would be 15 sixths. What I'd really like to do is multiply both the numerator and the denominator by one third in order to divide out their common divisor. Likewise, when we add, say two fifths and one tenth, that should be a half. But in order to get the half, we apply the formula to get 25 over 50, and then we can factor out the 25, the greatest common divisor of those two numbers. Well, it turns out that we can write down exactly that process in code. We can import a function gcd, which computes the greatest common divisor of two integers. And then, whenever we create a rational number, we take in its numerator and its denominator, which may not be relatively prime, but we can make it relatively prime by first computing the greatest common divisor of the two and then dividing that out of each. And so we get a rational number in lowest terms. So what's the point? Well, the point is that we can change the implementation of rational, the constructor, 
we didn't have to edit any of the other things that we had built already, such as add rational or mole rational, because we always had a separation between the functions that implement the abstract data type and those that manipulate it. 